Okay, movement to contact. What is it? <laughs> Glad you asked. I'm Dr. Christopher Larson, a veteran of the U.S. Army Infantry, founder of One Shepherd Leadership Institute, and author of Small Unit Tactical Doctrine. The movement to contact. When is it used? It is used when we don't have enough specific information about the enemy, but we do intend to go on the offense. Movement to contact is a type of attack. It is an offensive tactic. So we're going to go on the offense. Um, what we want is great intel, great information about uh, the enemy, where they are, how many of them are there, what's their relative combat power to ours, um, what's the best way we can separate them and defeat them individually, all of these wonderful things. Well, how often do you get that? Not very often. Um, you might get part of that, but you don't get a complete picture um, because information has an expiration date. So even if we got the information, particularly, particularly if the enemy knows that we have the information, they're going to do everything in their power to change that information, to change their status. So the reality is that we often go into offensive action without a real clear picture of the enemy. It is true, by the way, uh, when I was in a squad, fire team or squad, or platoon, that they would say, hey, the battalion's conducting a movement to contact, and we would start moving, and we would bump into the enemy, and then we would shoot at them, or they would shoot at us, and we would develop the situation. That is, we would shoot at each other or maneuver around each other long enough to go, oh, this is the situation. They have the upper hand, or I have the upper hand. They're about this size. There are about this many of them. They have about this capability. And then I can report that very, very recent information back to a higher uh, levels of the company, the battalion, the brigade, what have you. And in fact, that sort of movement then, by default, becomes a reconnaissance in force. Different class, different time. But nonetheless, I am moving and then making contact with the enemy because my company or battalion is doing a movement to contact. That's the MTC. That's how it's abbreviated, sometimes even called it, MTC, movement to contact. And when I do this often enough, I start to believe that a movement to contact is picking up my squad, my platoon, my company, and we just move until we bump into the enemy. No, 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 no. There are primarily two methods of movement to contact. One is seek and attack. The second one is the approach march. There are very important differences, but I admit that they seem a little nuanced. Here's the thing. Economy of force says that I must keep approximately 50% or greater. That's the rule of thumb. Yes, there's always rare circumstances where we have to violate the rule of thumb, but we say in the main body, the main force, we're going to keep about 50% or greater. 50% or greater in the main force, the main body, which of course is my reserve and my command. My command section and my reserve force. Um, and that makes up the main force. He's like, well, wait, 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 wait. Where's everybody else? Okay. It can be more than 50%. We don't want it to be less than 50% if we can avoid that. Everyone else is in the vanguards. Time to have a discussion. What's a vanguard? A vanguard is a force protection. It's really what it is. You can have vanguards to your flanks. They're protecting you. You can have vanguards to your rear. They're protecting you. But arguably the most important, most critical vanguards are whatever direction of travel you're moving in, you want uh, teams, small teams, forward of you. And they are your forward protection of your main body. But they're doing more than that. You're either pushing them to do reconnaissance or they're uh, pulling you to do reconnaissance. They are out moving forward. And they are reconnaissance push or reconnaissance pull. Which is which? Well, gets back to this. Reconnaissance pull is seek and attack. Let me show you. Our direction of travel is this way. Here's our main body, okay? Our main force. That's the command team and the reserves. We're going to do a seek and attack. So, 
I'm going to take 50% of this, break it into at least three teams. Let's go ahead and grab a, t a size. Let's say I have, oh, for sake of argument, let's say this is a rifle company, 120 people. I'm going to keep about 60 people back here. Roughly uh, a platoon and the headquarters at least, if not two platoons. So now, that means I'll take my other platoons, my other two platoons, and break them into three forces. We're going to put one, two, three. Could it be four? Could it be five? Yes. But I would say a minimum of three. And I'm going to give them uh, control measures. Maybe there's a creek going here. I say you stay north of the creek. Maybe there's a, I don't know, um, you know, a roadway going here. You stay south of the road. Now with those geographic measures, this team knows, okay, I stay in here and search for everything. I stay north of the creek but within some kind of visual or radio contact and look for everything. And I stay south of the road and I look for everything. What I'm looking for, what I'm seeking, is the enemy. Whether I'm looking for their positions or their main force or their reconnaissance, really doesn't matter. I'm trying to find the enemy and find where, they're, where I want to put pressure on the enemy. That's what the commander wants to know. Where do I dedicate my reserve force? So, they move. These guys move on their own, and they look, and they're trying to determine, hey, where should, or where can I find the enemy? When one of them finds the enemy, they report that back to the commander here with the reserve force, and they develop that situation for the commander. They are the eyes and ears forward of the commander. They may not even attack the enemy here. You can have a soft contact. That is, where you meet the enemy, but you don't engage them. They're not shooting at you, you're not shooting at them. Maybe they know you're there, maybe they don't. Maybe you've been quite stealthy. But either way, you develop that situation. You say, hey commander, I've got two guys sitting over here by a latrine smoking a cigarette. And the commander says, ah, a latrine. That might be their main body, their patrol base. Yes, let's you know develop that more. Somebody else over here says, hey, I've got two guys on a road checkpoint. Do you want us to attack them? No, no, no. Don't attack them. That's just a detail outside. I think maybe the enemy patrol base is up here by the latrine, not down there by a road checkpoint. And so at that point, as they find things and they say, okay, I've got it set, this vanguard over here says, I've got them. I see the patrol base. Now we can move very rapidly. They will fix the enemy in place. And very rapidly, this reserve force and command team will fall upon that patrol base and defeat them. All right, They will take them under attack, they will destroy them where they are. That's the whole idea. Well, wait a minute, what do these two do? Well, they can join in, but that's very precarious. That's difficult to do. You don't want to join a battle while it's raging. They look to isolate the enemy. Remember this checkpoint we said that was on the road? That's just one of many different types of uh, enemy nearby that might try to come to the rescue. So they put up blocking. They put up blocking positions and hold the enemy back from reinforcing that patrol base so that this main body can come and hit them. If this is the enemy's patrol base, they take them under fire, this whole thing comes in, and we do a main attack, right? Boom. They set the base of fire and fix them fix them into place, commit them to that battle, and the larger reserve force with the command element comes in and uses their combat power to destroy the patrol base. What you've just seen is a seek and attack, whereby the vanguards out here conducted reconnaissance pull. That means it is through their development of the situation, through their findings, they pulled the main body behind them. Wherever they found them said, Commander, Commander, you've got to see it. I found what you're looking for. Come this way. And that's reconnaissance pull, where the vanguards are pulling the main force behind them. So reconnaissance pull is used in a seek and attack. The approach march is going to use reconnaissance push. Reconnaissance push. It means the commander back there with the main force is going to tell the, um, the vanguards where to go. And they're going to give them a much more strict rules of engagement, much more strict maneuver. Let's imagine 
that our main force has to go to some mountaintop. And we're going to go up there and seize that because that direction, it gives us great, you know, observation. So we've already decided, yeah, we want to grab that uh, mountaintop. It's very important that we seize that piece of terrain. So we could just take our whole entire force and walk that way, right? But if we bump into the enemy, uh, they might overwhelm us. In any case, uh, they can absolutely get us in a decisive engagement. What's a decisive engagement? Well, it means one that we can't extract from. In a decisive engagement, as a general rule of thumb, it means two enemy opponents have hit, and someone's going to win, someone's going to lose. That's a decisive engagement. We don't want to engage that. That's not why we came here. We want that key terrain. So, all right, then the smart thing to do is let's do a movement to contact, and let's use the approach march. Since that is our direction of travel, I'm going to send, remember I've got at least 50%, maybe 60, maybe 70% back here, and I've got a, a direction of travel. I'm going to put one vanguard here, one vanguard here, and I'm going to give them a much more strict um, area of movement. And they're going to do, this is the fan method by the way, or the symbol for the fan method, they're going to clear this slowly or quickly as we continue to move forward. And if they hit something, let's say we're following a general piece of terrain or maybe a road or a creek or even a fence line, let's say the enemy has set up an ambush in anticipation of us coming, our vanguards will be able to de detect that, right, and report that backwards uh, to the commander. So the commander can generally bypass the enemy's strong point so that once again we can get on with our mission of taking that high terrain. Or the commander may choose, hey, I don't want to leave a large enemy force in my rear area, immediate rear area, let's go ahead and attack because we believe we have the upper hand here, the, the greater combat power. Whatever the commander's decision, in either case, if you have a minimum of three for a search and attack, three vanguards that is, I would argue you have a minimum of two for a, an approach march. And so they are nuanced differences how those vanguards are leveraged in a movement, the two types of movement to, can uh, can movement to contact. The concepts that really dictate what's going on here, because a vanguard is not just a protection, but is in its own right a uh, reconnaissance, is we're either doing reconnaissance push, that's the approach march, or reconnaissance pull, that was the previous seek an attack that we covered. This is how a movement to contact plays out in, uh, in real life. And so why? Why are so many professional warriors uh, mistaken when they say, yeah, movement to contact, I get it, my 30-man uh, my platoon picks up and we move in that direction because that's what we were told to do, and if we see the enemy, we take him to, to the fight. Okay, that's, that's not entirely wrong, but your 30-man platoon was either a vanguard for your company or potentially a vanguard for your battalion. And your battalion was maintaining 50, 60, 70 percent of its main body and its main force back here with the command element. You were a vanguard. Ah, that's what I was doing. I was a vanguard in a larger movement to contact. And that's what it appears. It's, it's funny how, you know, you get a worm's eye view of the battle space. This is not uncommon. In fact, it's quite common. And so it, it causes us to misinterpret what's going on in that battle space. And we start to think that our tactics are amazingly linear and primitive. And they look like World War I. No, in fact, they weren't even primitive in World War I. There's the reality. But you can see why those mistakes are made. This is the tactic, and the movement to contact is used in a wide, wide variety of missions and uh, to the effect uh, many different results, many different tactical results. And we're going to approach, uh, we're going to approach, yes, we will approach, we're going to discuss those in greater detail in future videos. Thank you.